How's it going, Vikings fans? Today for you guys, we've got three ups and three downs from the Minnesota Vikings 28-24 victory over the Detroit Let's Lions. Go. Get into those right after this. The Minnesota Vikings victory over the Detroit Lions. Finally, we saw a couple of players that we've been hoping to see more of the mm -hmm. first couple weeks finally shine. There are first ups. Let's jump right into them. Before we do that, though, I want to thank everybody for watching GG Sport Podcast. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell. Get notifications for more of our videos. All that good stuff. Yeah, let's jump right in. The, all our right. first ups for this game is no other than the duo of Adam Thielen and KJ Osborne. Yep. So they're moving up. Some stats here. KJ Osborne, five catches, 73 yards, one game-winning touchdown on the last drive for the Vikings mm -hmm. in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. Adam Thielen finally showed up, six catches, 61 yards. Nice touchdown to us. Uh, uh, first touchdown of the game for the Vikings. Nice red zone. Everything you expect from Adam Thielen. Nice route back of the end zone. Touchdown. Perfectly designed play. This is what we needed to see a lot more of, and we just didn't for the for whatever reason. But nice to see KJ and Adam Thielen finally step up, finally get involved. I think Kevin O'Connell really wanted to focus on getting these two involved in the offense, right, and it worked. Right. It was it was nice to see, and they're a huge reason why we won this football game, obviously. Yeah. Um, it took us a little bit to get it rolling. Uh, we, again, kind of went straight towards JJ early in the game. I was hoping we'd come right out the gates going towards these guys. But we got Adam Thielen involved earlier than usual in the first half, and then KJ Osborne all the way at the end of the game. But it was huge. And earlier in the game, KJ Osborne was wide open, which would have been a touchdown as well. Um, but there was pressure on Kirk Cousins, and the throw was a little bit off. But yeah, it was nice to have them in there, and, and we're going to continue needing to do that to keep winning games. And that brings us to Justin Jefferson. Uh, yeah, he's down. moving down, unfortunately. So I don't know what I don't know if it's. So I, I'm trying to figure out what, what what's at the core of this. Obviously, he's being defended differently. They're 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 putting more coverage towards him because we saw what he could do in Week One. But mm -hmm. Kevin O'Connell also took a lot of blame. Uh, a lot of blame as well, saying he needs to find more creative ways to get Justin Jefferson involved, open, to get him the football, right? And and I think that is part of it. Uh, he also had a couple opportunities where, you know, I mean, he had coverage was tight, but he could have made a couple catches that he ended up dropping. One so, that he generally would catch. Exactly, yeah. So I don't know if he's still I, – I don't know if it's getting into his head that he maybe last week – what happened last week with Darius Slay and then coming, coming into this game, but – I don't I'm not concerned yet because we know how good Justin Jefferson is right. and his offense is still kind of trying to figure it out. Once things get clicking, I think I mean obviously he's going to start getting his catches. Um and then obviously the mind of Kevin O'Connell is going to find ways to keep him open, but it's disappointing for him to see this, but that's the thing. At least that's why everybody's you know talked so much about the three receivers we do have on a day mm -hmm. like this where JJ was held in check, three of four, three three catches, 14 yards. As we mm -hmm. just saw, KJ and Adam took over for the rest of it, plus the plus the running game, which we'll get into a little yes. bit later. Spoiler alert! But <laughs> so it's it's disappointing to see, but you know, I yeah, I have full faith that he's gonna figure that he's gonna figure it out and get it turned around. Oh, yeah, I have I have no question. I think these are two out. These are gonna be two outlier games. I just think, like we've said before, with uh, Thielen and I think getting the ball to Thielen and KJ early is gonna be important to kind of open up the field for Justin Jefferson so they can't just shadow him because if they only if they're going to put two or three guys just on Jeff Justin Jefferson Adam Thielen and KJ Osborne are more than capable of making them hurt for that and for we sure. have to make we have to make them hurt for that for yeah. doing that and then obviously they'll have no choice but to pull guys off JJ so yep, definitely and what and what's going to help all the receivers as well is getting the run game going which today finally started to happen here um so moving on up Delvin Cook uh, before his uh, unfortunate shoulder injury, which caused a fumble, uh, 17 carries, 96 yards, one touchdown. Uh, Kevin O'Connell said he wanted to get the running game moving, mm -hmm. and we saw that he fed him early, fed him often, kind of let off the running game a little bit in the first half there, got back to it in the second half. After Delvin went down, Madison came in, seven carries, 28 yards, and the, touch and the sure. touchdown in the fourth quarter, which was huge. So as we saw, when the running game gets going, it opens up the entire offense. Now it's going to be – solid game planning and being right. able to con sustain drives and be consistent on offense. Mm -hmm. This just shows mm -hmm. the talent we have on this team. When JJ's down, we still put up 28 points. These two still did their thing. The receivers still did their thing T Four touchdowns between the four of them. So we, we have the talent to do it. It's just being consistent and sustaining drives. So that's right. what it's going to take, but it's nice to see the running game finally get moving behind that offensive line. Yes. And I do want to say again, um, 
Delvin Cook's going to be okay from this injury. Sounds like he's he says he's going to play next week, so uh, we don't have to worry about that. But yeah, I mean, one good positive thing from this game, other than we did get a victory, is uh, is that I think we used our other playmakers more consistently. So I'm hoping that opened up our eyes just to continue doing that moving forward here. For sure. So nice to see the running game finally come alive. Yes. Uh, but the kicking game <laughs> was a different story. Greg Joseph... Uh, oh, of two on field goals. He made all of his extra points, which is fantastic. At least that's not part of his game. And right. I get it. The two kicks were from his career long 56, but he missed them very badly. Um, disappointing. You know, I mean, obviously, as I said, there wasn't, a, there wasn't any like big pressure kicks and the only pressure kicks were his extra points, which was great. It would have been mm-hmm. nice to see him connect on those field goals. Um, yeah. But, I still trust I mean, Greg Joseph. Yes. I still know he's a good kicker, just an off day, but it is, it's a little, I mean, and, and again, they were 56 yard field goals, but. Right, uh, it's right, still right. something you you don't want to see misses, unfortunately, and that's just well, it is what it is. Plus, he was I mean, he's been hitting fifty six yards and sixty yarders all through training camp and preseason and all that. So I think I think we just have him on a higher pedestal uh, this year than probably most kickers that we've had in years past. Right. So there's just that like kind of surprising that he missed too, even from fifty six. Yeah. But all th- everything will be good there. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Next player is moving up. Two of them, linebacker duo of Eric Kendricks and Jordan Hicks. A uh, total of 25 tackles. Um, they each had mm-hmm. a pass defense. Obviously, Eric Kendricks late in the game was huge. Uh, Jordan Hicks got in on a couple explosive plays as well on that defense. Um, yeah, I mean, we we kind of knew we've kind of known it since the preseason that the, those interior uh, linebackers are solid. I mean, Eric Kendricks one of the best in the game. Jordan right. Hicks is a steady veteran. Uh, and we haven't seen we haven't really seen any Brian Osamoa. We saw him on special teams today, uh, uh, yesterday, yeah. making a huge play. But um, when we finally see him get in at linebacker a little bit, and I think he will get his turn, I think he's gonna I think he's gonna excite, and I think he's gonna be impressive. Mm-hmm. But you know, as long as Jordan Hicks keeps playing well, I don't think we're gonna see much of him. So let's let's hope we don't see him. Um, but yeah, I, I I thought I mean EK of course, and I thought I thought uh, uh, Hicks played a very really good game today as well yesterday. Yeah. Uh- it's 14 total tackles from Hicks and then 11 from Kendricks. And yeah, like you said, they both had a, um, they disrupted a, a reception, but I think Jordan Hicks, I mean, he's got to be on, I think the first game he had like 14 tac- total tackles too. And last game he kind of had not his best game, but yeah, I mean, they're tackling machines and Kendricks just is there in big moments. Um, if there was one defensive player, I would say so far this year that steps up in big moments, it's him through three games. And that's huge for our middle linebackers. And it's like, so so, so since we have those kind of guys back there, um, I do hope that we continue, continue seeing some more rushes from our defensive ends, or not our defensive ends, but our, uh, well, outside linebackers. I feel like, I don't know, they, it seems like they're just playing kind of defensive end roles. Like, we don't have five guys rushing a lot, I guess. Um, yeah. I, I'm hoping we can see that. We got two guys that can kind of cover the middle pretty well. And I'm hoping that we can lean on that a little bit more going forward and add a little bit more rush, which I think we need. So, yeah. Cause there is a lot of good pieces on this defense, but overall the defense is kind is, is a concern. And that leads to our final down of the day. And that is Ed Donatel and his defense Uh, yards allowed four on a 16, three touchdowns allowed to Jared Goff and the lions. Now we've said it, we said it before. This is not the same Lions team. There's a lot of talent on this Lions team, but their top two explosive players were both dinged up and in and out of the game uh, mm-hmm. in this one. So I don't know. And it's just they came into this game playing defense the same way that they played against Philadelphia. And it's right, just that, right. which De- Donatello, I, I was listening to his press conference. He wasn't happy when one of the reporters kept calling it a shell coverage. He told him to stop saying it that way. <laughs> well, you're playing, no like. matter what, you're playing, you're playing soft coverage. So, right, right. You know what? I mean, we got think, it. Something uh, needs to change. Yeah, and I just want to say, I think what against the Eagles, um, Hertz went like he completed like ten of his first ten throws or whatever, and he went like sixteen f- for like fifteen or something like that. I don't know in the first half, and again Jared Goff uh, or completed like his first ten attempts or something like that. So that's obvious. Obviously, we're doing something. We're not pressing them hard enough or putting enough pressure on them. If we're allowing a guy like Jared Goff to get and Jalen Hurts even um, to get ten straight completions, so so that's just a big sign right there by itself. And it's just we're letting teams come right down on us. Um, We're trying not to. It seems like we're trying not to allow the big play. But who cares if they're just going to spend go right down on you and then uh, they're eating up the play time and. 
or everything like that. So hopefully we can we see something more out of him and we don't yeah. continue doing that. At least right. get some just the blitz thing, the blitz thing. Yeah. I know that's what we need to do. And and I th- and I think we I think the Lions kind of saved his defense a little bit today by keep going you know when they kept going for it on fourth down. Um, right. So I don't know. I think this to me the defense is the most concerning part. I thought we'd get it fixed coming into the season, but I don't know. There's there's a lot of work to do on the defense. It's it's kind of it's kind of a struggle. So we'll and it does see. seem more of like a scheme issue so far. Yeah, so exactly. I think it has potential to be fixed. Yeah, exactly. tons of talent. They've got to get they've got to get it going. So let us yeah. know what you thought of our three ups, three downs. Let us know if we missed anybody down in the comment section, and we'll see you guys next time on the GG Sports Podcast. Skull Vikes.